Hi everybody. We have in store for you, at least in this video, a topic that is very common in high school math, in particular in grade math, uh, in grade nine math, and that is relations. So now for relations, basically, you can kind of think of it as a relationship. Now, relationships between what? Well, you have numerous relationships that you may want to be able to compare, and those relationships can be, for example, between um, the age, okay, that may be, you know, as you're growing up, and let's say maybe the amount of money that you make, <clears throat> and you see a little table on the right-hand side, okay, so in your 20s, in your 30s, in your 40s and 50s, and then you can see, you know, 35, the K stands for 1,000, okay, and your salary maybe is going up. So you can have a relationship between two different variables, okay? So now those relationships that you have don't necessarily have to be between age and money. They can, of course, be between, for example, days and temperature, okay? So what is happening in terms of temperature over time? It can be relationship between, you know, especially in 2020 when we have the COVID virus, okay? So the days and then the number of cases that maybe have been happening in your city or town or in a country, uh, it can be relationships between medications that are given, let's say, to a patient, okay? So over a particular period of time, okay? It can be relationship between, for example, the value of a company, okay, um, that you have, again, as you can see it over time. So we have these numerous relationships in sciences and business and engineering, and we want to be able to compare certain things and be able to nicely capture them. Now, we can capture them by using sometimes uh, various forms of graphs. So you can see here, okay, so you can capture them as bar graphs or scatter graphs or scatter plots, okay, line graphs, and there are many others, right? So these are ones that are kind of um, useful in order to know and to be able to capture this information. Now, you can also capture that information in tables, of course, right? But in tables, visually, it's not as nice to be able to see a picture of a graph so that it kind of stands out for you so that you can see that relationship come out. So in this is just an introduction, okay, for this particular video, so that you have a concept of these relationships between two particular variables, okay, that you have. The last item on this little agenda there, it says rates. Now, rates are much different than, for example, graphs because graphs are very visual and they capture multiple data, while rates is basically just a comparison between two quantities and two data points, but they do have different type of a unit, okay? And I'll talk about that briefly, okay? Um, towards the end of the video. So here, in terms of capturing data, so you know, I put, um, so this little table in terms of age, and let's say we wanted to capture this as a bar graph, just so that you know, in terms of bar graphs, so what we do is, so I'm gonna go over here, so in your 20s, okay, so it says 35,000, so 35,000, not gonna do it exactly, okay, but let's say I wanna do a bar graph, that will represent that 35,000 for me. And that would be a bar graph. And sometimes, you know, we would maybe pencil this in or color this in so that it pops out a little more. And it's called a bar graph because we're creating literally just a bar that goes up. And of course we can do that, okay? So within your 30, so let's say 48. So now that bar graph is gonna change. It's gonna get a little closer towards 50 there. So we have this. And let me kind of make this so that it's kind of proportional. And so here's another bar, and that would be in your 30s in terms of your salary. And you can then nicely read them off, right? Okay, so this would be <clears throat> the information that you would have. Now, you don't have to put those dots there. I'm just doing them so that they're visually, you can see how the bars align. And of course, we can do the same thing with the bars for the following, right? So I can do 40, so this would get me into kind of the 62 range, somewhere along there. Well, and you can see that over time, you know, your salary uh, may actually increase. Now, of course, it depends what happens in your life. I'm kind of doing the ideal here. 
Okay, you know, sometimes maybe we'll lose a job, so you know, it, it may not happen, but let's assume that this is on the average. So those are bar graphs that we can do, right? And they capture very nicely if we have data and that there's not too much data to capture. Now, if we typically have quite a lot of data points that we would wanna do, then what we do is we use typically scatter graphs. And so I'm gonna write here, so let's say this is called a scatter graph or a scatter plot. So it's plotting of scatter points, so just points instead of bars, right? Somewhere along, and in this case, what I have done here, I have put temperature, and I'm relating, okay, I'm making a relationship, so a relation between, okay, days. So let's say if I wanted to continue on, and here take the temperature over the X amount of days, okay, I'm gonna, not gonna fill this out entirely, put dot, 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 but let's say we wanted to do it over you know, quite a lot of days and we wanted to see okay, what are going to be the actual temperature changes. And let's say maybe this will of course depend when you're starting to count. If maybe you're in winter and you're in a climate where it's actually cold, the temperatures will be different. Okay, if you're in the spring or something like that, okay, obviously that will change, but that's the beauty. So all these graphs that you see they would have a title so you know you would put a title in here so that you would let the user okay uh, know so that they could see okay what are you actually doing days and temperature when are they happening but i'm doing this just to show you what a scatter plot is and for instance you know i'm going to just scatter points along okay on these particular days here okay and just so that you can see okay so what may happen all right within here okay so notice that i am scattering along this is why it's called a scatter plot okay, the various points along so you don't put any bars there you do not put any lines or connecting them in any case and that is called a scatter plot and we can pick off information here as well for example if we wanted to know on the eighth day what has happened right we can kind of glance back and see that oh, okay it was somewhere between 15 and 20 degrees so these are scatter plots are kind of useful and, and you can take out information from them and we'll do that in some future videos related to these relations. And another one which is kind of very common and maybe some of you know the company Apple and you, you maybe have even a product uh, of Apple. Okay, so Apple, so what I did was I actually took a, a graph here and this is called a line graph. So this is called a line graph. And the reason is because it is a line that is connecting the points along the way. Now, in this case, this is with respect to time. So notice the dates that you see there at the bottom right here. And it just tells you what is happening throughout time. And you may notice that this is $114.19. It says US dollars because that's how much one share of Apple, the company, cost and here okay what you see on the vertical axes okay the y ones so this would be your price in terms of money and you can see that it kind of started hovered a little bit above 50 here okay and then it started to go up okay then it went up and then there's some you know dips in here so there's a dip here then it comes down in price goes up in price and that's what happens right so it's something that's uncontrollable and out of our um uh, nature that we wouldn't know and but th that is called a line graph so we have a line graph we have a scatter plot or scatter graph and then a bar graph so these ones are typically ones that you may run into the last topic okay so before you let go is you should know with respect to relations what rates are okay so i'm going to talk uh, briefly here about rates okay, so that you have a little bit of an idea so when we do talk about a rate, it is not a bunch of points connected together or drawn in terms of bars. Okay, so this is basically a comparison between only um, two quantities, so two items that we have, and quantities are things that we can measure um, with different units. Okay, so with different okay, units. So for example, you know, you might say, let's say maybe you traveled a certain distance. Okay, let's say you traveled 85 kilometers in, okay, let's say 
you know, 1.2 hours. And notice that, so here what we're doing is we're comparing, okay, so our distance, which was in kilometers, in terms of time, which is, uh, uh, in terms of time, in terms of hours, okay, so that is the two quantities, distance and time, with different units that we have. And you can actually write this, okay, you can also write this, okay, in this way, so 85 kilometers, okay, in 1.2 hours, and if you divide these two numbers, okay, right here, so 85 divided by 1.2, let's see what that gives us. So we have 85 divided by 1.2, so let's say 70.83333, so I'm gonna just round it, so 70.8, let's say three, you can put a little bar here so that it means it continues, and this means kilometers per hour. So what you've created now is actually something called a unit rate. Unit means one, so it is per one. So it means 70, approximately 70.8 kilometers per one hour, all right? Or 70.8 in one hour, and we can do that. And these rates happen uh, quite frequently where you wanna be able to compare to different things. So for example, if you may be making money you know, $30 per hour, okay, so that is considered a unit rate because it's per one hour, it says $30 in one hour, okay, maybe that you've made, okay. Now, you can also do that maybe with medication, so, you know, if you're giving a patient medication, so, you know, let's say 100 milliliters, all right, in 20 minutes, so notice that this is a rate, and you can write it, so 100 milliliters all over 20 minutes, okay? And if you wanted to create a unit rate, you can divide the two, so you're gonna get five milliliters per minute, okay? This would be called a unit rate, unit rate, because the word unit means per one, okay? So it's one. So that's a introduction to kind of relations. So it is relationships between different quantities, different variables, and we can use graphs, we can use a table, okay, to try to represent these things. And they are kind of intuitive, so it's not that bad once you hear the words bar graphs, scatter graphs, and line graphs, um, and rates, you know, they do start making a little bit of sense, okay? So thank you for watching. We will continue on with the videos in terms of relations. Okay, so we'll see you there. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye.